Hello and welcome to WePC. My name's Jack and today we're going to be looking at how to set up, enable and configure AMD's FSR for the best performance in game. AMD's FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution is a new technology AMD released a couple of weeks ago now to compete with Nvidia's proprietary DLSS technology. Only AMD haven't quite been so stingy with the tech as AMD's FSR will be available on any GPUs by Nvidia from Pascal onwards. So that's anything from the GT 1030 all the way up to the RTX 3090. Speaking of compatibility, there's a laundry list of supported GPUs and APUs from AMD. That's anything from the Ryzen 2000 series APUs on the CPU side, and anything from the RX 460 all the way up to the 6000 and 6000M series of GPUs on the GPU side, of course. That's a lot of support. Well, before we get into the video proper, can I please ask that you smash that like button and subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all the latest benchmark and tech content. You can also join our Discord, link is down in the video description. We love interacting with our community and we'd love to see you in there. My plan for this video then, is to take you through the process of configuring FSR on both AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Then we're going to take a look at how to enable the feature on both platforms. They are both the same process as of now, but that may be subject to change as future updates roll out. So how do we get FSR then? All we're going to do is navigate to the AMD Radeon software download page. And you guessed it, download Radeon software. You can do this specifically for your GPU or APU through amd.com support, where you select your exact make and model of GPU through a list of products. But our way uses the Radeon software to just auto detect what GPU we have installed, and it will automatically install the drivers accordingly. These steps will be exactly the same for Windows 11 when that is released, so don't worry about that. Once the file is finished downloaded, go ahead and click the install button. Once the Radeon software has finished extracting, the main install window will appear. Make sure it's correctly reading your GPU and click on the install button in the bottom right. It's important to note that your screen may flicker, turn off temporarily, and even change color or resolution during GPU driver installations. Then this is completely normal, don't worry. Once the driver has been installed, you may, but not always, be prompted to do a system restart. Go ahead and do that just to get that section squared away and make sure everything's working properly. Once the latest GPU driver is installed, you can go ahead and navigate to the desktop and right click on it. Head into the AMD Radeon software option. Now at the time of recording this, you don't actually have to change anything within the Radeon software to enable FSR, but I'm going to show you where you'll most likely find the option should FSR become a toggleable feature. Should that happen in the future then, you'll most likely find the feature within the graphics tab under global graphics. It may also appear in the display tab where VSR is located. Next step is to find a game. At the time of recording this video, there are only a handful of games available that support FSR, but that is quickly changing, with a whole host of games and developers ready to integrate the feature into their games, such as Valve, Obsidian, and other big name developers. I'll leave a link in the video description to all the source articles and media I use to gather this information. So go check that out if you want to read into anything specifically. So all that's left then is to boot into an AMD FSR compatible game. I'm going to be using Godfall for my tests as it's fairly graphically intensive. So with that out of the way then, enabling FSR in game is exactly the same as it is on an Nvidia card. Head into the display settings of any compatible game and enable it. No extra steps or tricks, just head into the display settings and enable it. Here are the settings we're going to be running Godfall in. As you can see, it's all pretty much cranked to the max. First off then, let's establish a baseline. This is native 4K with FSR disabled, and we get an FPS average of 59 in this scene. Not too bad. We are using the 6800, so 60 FPS is something I'd expect. But let's see what sort of improvements we can get by using FSR. In ultra quality mode, the highest quality setting FSR has to offer, it already gives us a huge boost in FPS. 91 FPS is the average for ultra quality. That's 32 FPS over native and a staggering 54.2% increase in FPS. 
and literally no change in visual fidelity. Quality mode is next then, and you'll still struggle to see any quality drops within the scene, despite the heavier decrease on internal resolution. 111 FPS average, the quality setting gives us, that's an increase of 52 FPS, an 88.1% difference over native. Now, balanced mode. Balanced aims to shoot for high FPS without making a special effort to preserve image quality. Balanced as the name suggests. And increase FPS it does, with a still very decent image quality, 136 FPS is the average to be had here. Again, a massive 130.5% FPS increase over native 4K. Lastly, we have the performance setting. Starting to get a little alias now, but with a respectable average of 165 FPS, an increase of 106, that's a 179.6% difference over native. It's hard to be mad at the quality. So let's compare the visual differences between all of the options then. As we slide through the FSR option, you can see that there isn't much of a decrease in visual quality at all. If you pay attention to some of the edges on the doorway architecture, you can see some alias inner smudging. The same is true for the small step just outside of the doorway. But this is only apparent on the balanced or performance settings. You gain a lot of FPS for not a lot of loss in visual quality. The same cannot be said when the native resolution is lower, however. Anyway, let's take a look at NVIDIA. The process is the same, just with different software. You want to navigate to NVIDIA's website here, nvidia.com slash GeForce Experience, the link will be in the description below of course, and you want to hit the big green download now button. And once that's finished downloading, you want to run it from either Chrome or just drag it to your desktop and run it. And just wait for the application to extract and install. NVIDIA's GeForce Experience does require you to have an account with them. I'm already signed in as GeForce Experience is already present on my system, but it only takes a minute to set up. Once that's done and you've signed into your account, you want to navigate over to the Drivers tab and click the Check for Updates button on the right. I already have the latest drivers installed, so I need not worry. GeForce Experience sometimes automatically detects whether there's a new driver update available. So you might be met with two buttons here, a green Express Installation button, which Nvidia recommends you use, and a grey slash black Custom Installation button. Just go ahead and use the Express Install button per Nvidia's recommendation, as this is the installation that requires the least user input, but of course, if you know what you're doing, feel free to use Custom. It's important that you keep your drivers up to date to make sure you catch any later iterations of FSR that may contain the latest fixes or optimizations. So it's very unlikely that this will be the case, but I'm going to show you where FSR may be located within the NVIDIA control panel should the feature become toggleable at a later date. So to do that, we're going to navigate to our desktop and right click on it. We want to select the NVIDIA control panel option. Inside the NVIDIA control panel then, we want to find the Manage 3D Settings list. Within that is where I think FSR will be located. Makes sense that it may be due to the presence of the already known DSR feature. This will most likely not be the case, but I just wanted to show you in case it does actually become a toggleable feature. So with that out of the way then, enabling FSR in-game is exactly the same process as if it was on an AMD card. No extra steps or tricks, just head into the display settings of any compatible game and enable it. So let's take a look at Godfall on Nvidia's side then. Same as before, we're going to have a look at 4K native as a baseline and see how FSR stacks up on an Nvidia card. 55 FPS is the average on the exact same scene in Godfall, pretty similar to our 6800's 59 FPS. We are using an RTX 3070 here representing NVIDIA's side. So we'll keep that 55 FPS in mind and move on to our first setting, Ultra Quality. Ultra Quality gives us an incredible increase of 28 FPS. That's a percentage change of 50.9, with no visual quality decrease at all. Next up is the quality setting. As we can see, there's hardly a visual difference, but we do climb to a good 101 FPS average. That's a 46 FPS increase over native, 
And when you put it into percentage terms, 83.3%, it just seems ever more impressive. Second to last, we have balanced. Again, balanced aims to find a good balance, clues in the name, between quality and FPS. It's not out to specifically preserve quality. A staggering 121.8% increase in FPS over Nated to be had here. That's 67 FPS over our initial 55 for quality. Lastly, we have performance. Performance again is the mode more optimized for FPS, not necessarily visual quality. And it's easy to tell since it's squeezing a massive amount of FPS over our initial 55. Average coming in at 146 FPS, a 91 FPS increase and a percentage change of 165.4%, over 2.5 times the FPS. Pretty good numbers then, but how does FSR on an Nvidia card stack up against the AMD card in terms of visuals? Let's take a look. We are in 4K here again, meaning the internal resolution at worst is 1080p. Just like the AMD comparison, I'm really having to strain to see a difference in visual quality here. This technology really does work on Nvidia and isn't biased towards AMD in the slightest. So big up on AMD for being unbiased. If your GPU can run at 1080p just fine, it's really worth giving FSR a try. It will work differently on different GPUs, obviously, with less powerful GPUs not being able to push the same level of performance out of the downscaling method, but still worth a shot. That's all well and good, and the FSR numbers really show. But what are the scaling factors with FSR? The scaling factors are as follows. A 1.3 times scale factor for ultra quality with an internal resolution of 2954 by 1662. A 1 1.5 times scale factor for quality with an internal resolution of 2560 by 1440, standard 1440p. A 1.7 times scale factor for balanced with an internal resolution of 2259 by 1270. And finally, a two times scale factor for performance with an internal resolution of 1920 by 1080, standard 1080p. Meaning even on performance, the worst mode for visual quality, you're still rendering at 1080p when in 4K. And 1080p still looks just fine for games today. It's only when you go lower than 4K and enable FSR, you really start to see the quality take a hit. For example, performance mode in native 1440p has an internal resolution of 1280 by 720, standard 720p. And that's definitely a little rough around the edges. I'm going to put on screen now my recommended settings to use in different resolutions so you have a good idea on what you'd expect to use for optimal quality to performance ratios. In 4K, I recommend you use anything from ultra quality down to balanced. For 2K or 1440p, I recommend you use ultra quality or quality. And for 1080p or less, I always recommend you use ultra quality to get the best visual fidelity possible. For anyone knowledgeable on NVIDIA's DLSS technology, you'll know that DLSS is based on a temporal upscaling technology, meaning you get very noticeable smearing or ghosting around the edges of moving objects on screen. With FSR, there's no such issue. It's a clean, crisp and sharp image, as FSR does not work in this way. Well, that's basically it. That's all you really need to know on how to set up, configure and use FSR. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. We do have plenty of content surrounding FSR on the channel currently, so if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. We also have a Discord server with well over 100 members and we'd love to add you to the list, so go ahead and join if you're interested. Come share a meme, come share your PC, talk about your specs, talk about what's going on with tech at the minute, just come and have a laugh. With that being said, this has been Jack from WePC. And I'll see you in the next one.